So we are starting with a new chapter here, which is the lacrimal drainage system. We are going to discuss anatomy and physiology in this lecture. Uh, starting with the anatomy. Uh, the lacrimal drainage system uh, consists of the following structures. Uh, number one are the punta, which are located at the posterior edge of the lid margin at the junction of the lash pairing lateral 5 6 parcellaris and the medial non ciliated 1 6 pars lacrimalis. Uh, they are shown in the diagram here. Uh, they are small holes and uh, they can be easily uh, inspected. Uh, uh, as a face slightly posteriorly and inspected by inverting the medial aspect of the lid. Uh, treatment of water wa watering caused by punctal stenosis or malposition is relatively straightforward. Coming towards the canaliculi, uh, which pass vertically from the lid margin for about two millimeter. This part, uh, which is the vertical part uh, and two millimeter part, it is called ampullae. And uh, then they turn medially. As you can see here, they are running medially here, from here to here, and this is 8 millimeter. Uh, and they run her medially and horizontally for about 8 millimeter to reach the lacrimal sac uh, as they are entering into the lacrimal sac here. Uh, the superior and inferior canaliculi usually more than 90% unite to form the common canaliculi, uh, which opens into the lateral wall of the lacrimal sac. Uncommonly, each canaliculus opens separately into the sac. A small flap of mucosa, which is the Rosenmuller valve, overhangs the junction of the common canaliculus and the lacrimal sac, which is the uh, uh, and prevents the reflux of tears into the canaliculi. Treatment of the canalicular obstruction may be complex. Uh, so this is uh, the part where the valve of the Rosenmuller might exist. Uh, afterwards, this is uh, the lacrimal sac as we are discussing. This is about 8 to 10 millimeter long and lies in the lacrimal fossa between the anterior and posterior lacrimal crests. Uh, so this whole area is uh, lacrimal sac. It, uh, the lacrimal bone and the frontal process of the maxilla uh, separate the lacrimal sac from the middle meatus of the nasal cavity in decrocystor rhinostomy and an estomosal is, is created between the sac and the nasal mucosa to bypass an obstruction in the nasal lacrimal duct, uh, which is uh, 12 to 18 millimeters long just next to it this is the nasolacrimal duct nld uh, it descends and angles slightly laterally and posteriorly to open into the inferior nasal meatus lateral to and below the inferior turbinate opening of the duct is partially covered by a mucosal fold uh, just like the valve of rosenmuller it is called the valve of hasner here so, moving towards the physiology, now the tears are secreted by the main and accessory lacrimal glands and they pass uh, across the ocular surface. A variable amount of the aqueous uh, component of the tear film is lost by evaporation with the uh, remainder of the tears hypothesized to drain uh, substantially by the following mechanisms that I am going to discuss. Firstly, the tears flow along the upper and the lower marginal strips and pooling in the lacus rect lacrimalis. Now, this is the lacus rect lac rec lacrimalis, which I am trying to draw into the green color from the blue, uh, which is medial to the lower puncta. And then they enter the upper and lower canaliculi by a combination of capillarity and suction. Uh, now, the so first mechanism is uh, by capillarity and suction. Now, with the each blink, the pretarsal orbicularis oculi uh, muscle compresses the ampullae here, 
and shortens and compresses the horizontal canaliculi and closes and moves the puncta medially resisting reflex. Uh, so sim simultaneously contraction of the lacrimal part of the orbicularis oculi creates a positive pressure that forces the tears down to the uh, nasolacrimal duct and into the nose mediated by helically arranged connective tissue around the uh, lacrimal sac. So afterwards, when the eye opens, the canaliculis expand uh, with the sac, as you can see here, expansion, which creates a negative pressure that draws the tear from the canaliculi into the sac. So, what happens when anatomy or physiology is disturbed? Uh, it causes a watery eye, uh, also called epiphora, which is the overflowing of tears at the lead margin. There are two mechanisms. One is hypersecretion, which is secondary to anterior segment disease, and defective drainage due to compromised lacrimal drainage system. So, hypersecretion secondary to anterior segment disease, such as dry eye, uh, paradoxical watering, or inflammation. In these cases, watering is associated with symptoms of underlying uh, cause, and treatment is usually medical. It is common for a watering eye to be caused by the reflex hypersecretion of tears secondary to dry ocular surface. Defective drainage due to compromised lacrimal drainage system may be caused by malposition. Uh, for example, in cases of atropion of the lacrimal puncta or in cases of obstruction at any point along the drainage system from the punctal region to the valve of Hasner and lastly, or in cases of lacrimal pump failure, uh, which may occur secondarily to lower leg laxity or weakness of the orbicularis of mus muscle, for example, in cases of facial nerve palsy. So this is where we are concluding the lecture of uh, anatomy and physiology of lacrimal drainage system. And uh, thank you all for uh, listening. And if you like the lecture, please. Uh, Click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.